So let me tell you three reasons why, or three situations why you could benefit from growing these. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Tuesday, April 11th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we need to harvest the rest of our overwintered carrots so we can clean out a bed and plant some more cucumbers. We're gonna be building another cucumber trellis. And I'm gonna tell you three reasons or give you three situations why your garden could benefit greatly from growing this type of cucumber. So several, several weeks ago, we planted some pickles in this long skinny raised bed here. Some of them got killed by a late frost. Some of them didn't. That's why we got some plants that are larger than others. Some are just popping through there. But it looks like now we're gonna have a full row. And when we planted those pickles, we set up one of these Ollie Garden raised bed trellises here. And we modified ours by putting some Hortanova netting across the middle of it. And so today what we need to do is duplicate what we've got right there over here in this bed. But before we can do that, we need to get these carrots out of here. So here we've got two double rows of carrots that we overwintered, planted these back in October like we normally do. Now in a normal year, these would have already been harvested, but because we had that Arctic blast right before Christmas, burnt back the leaves really bad. And these have taken almost twice as long as they normally take. Now, some of them in here are probably a little too big. I noticed when I harvested the other half of this bed the other day that some of them had split. So probably gonna have to cull a few, but the ones I've gotten so far looked really good. We cooked about half of this bed for Easter the other day. They were a big hit at our Easter lunch. So we're gonna get the rest of them out of here now. We've got yellow carrots on this side. We've got purple carrots on this side. So we're gonna kind of cull as we go here. If we see any that have gotten too big or that have split, we'll put those in our dog's bucket here, give those to the worms or chickens. We'll keep all the good looking ones. I didn't notice many of these yellow ones split another day. There's some good looking carrots right there. This is a variety called Yellowstone. We grow every year, really like it. I'm just gonna mix the yellow and purple carrots in my keeper bucket here because we've been mixing them when we cook them. Just been slicing them up putting purple and yellow carrots in the same dish there man those look good there that one looks a little rotten on top that one does too so we'll cull those got some nice ones on the back side here all those look good there's a monster yellow carrot right there it still looks pretty good sometimes when they get real big like that they can get kind of woody but I think that one's gonna be too woody. The top on it's not green. Should just be a nice big carrot to eat. There's another monster right there. That one was reaching way down deep in that raised bed. That looks a little boogered up right there on top, but I think we can salvage the rest of it. Now let's get these purple carrots here. And these are the ones I noticed the other day had started to split on me a little bit. The size consistency wasn't what we've seen with the yellow carrots, but we're getting some tasty carrots out of here nonetheless. It's a nice purple carrot right there. And these, the tops aren't quite as strong on them either. So some of them, the tops have been breaking on me as I'm trying to pull them up, but that's okay. See that one there? That one's already split on us. So that one will go to the chickens or the worms. And there's some of that size inconsistency I was telling you about. I didn't have this happen with this variety last year, this dragon variety. It was pretty consistent for me last year, but I'm guessing that has something to do with the Arctic blast here. Maybe we just planted them too thick. See what else we can find here. Those there are a little bigger. Somehow an orange carrot snuck into the mix there. That one split, so that's a cull. Decent ones there, a couple splitters as well. All right, so not our best ever purple carrot performance there, although that one on top is pretty nice. The ones I got at the beginning of the row for Easter were a little more consistently sized, a little better than those here on the back end of the row for whatever reason. We got some big carrots in there and we got some little carrots in there. 
And that's why I always say don't worry about thinning your carrots. Just plant them thick and let them grow. They'll push each other out of the way. You'll get some big ones that you can slice up. You'll get some little ones that you can put in whole in the crock pot with a roast. Get a lot of good variety of sizes there that you can use in different ways. And the way we've been enjoying these bigger ones lately, the way Brooklyn prepared them for Easter, was to cut these up in slices about, I don't know, quarter inch, eighth of an inch thick. Get you a big glass Pyrex pan there. Put all your carrot slices in there, purple, yellow, whatever colors you've got. You should put some Parmesan cheese on them and then cut some little pieces of butter. and Kind of lay them all over the pan. Put them in the oven at say 425 until they're tender and you're talking about some mighty fine eating. All right, now that we've got most of those carrots harvested, I'm sure there's a few stragglers in there I missed. I'm gonna get this cleaned up a little bit so we can amend this soil with some of our homemade compost before we plant our cucumbers. I'm just gonna pull out a few of these carrot tops that are sitting in here, a few of these weeds as well. And then we need to pull up our drip tape here. I'm not gonna disconnect it right there. We're gonna reuse it for those cucumbers. I'm just gonna kind of pull it over the front of the bed there. That way we can mix in our compost here. So now we'll get us a dog's bucket full of this homemade compost here. And we'll dump it on our bed. Somewhat evenly there. And we'll take our little three-prong cultivator here, kind of smooth it out and mix it into the soil some. Oh, there's a carrot that we missed. And that should be pretty good right there. Found a couple worms in there as I was moving around that compost. There's one right there. Not going to hurt to have some worms in this bed. I'll let them get down a little bit deeper so the sun doesn't get them. But now we're ready to plant some cucumbers. Well... I say we're ready to plant some cucumbers. Let's go ahead and put these drip lines back in place. I'm not gonna bury these right now. May end up putting some staples on them in the future if they try to move around a whole lot on me, but I'm just gonna leave them like they are for now. So my plan here is to do just like we did with that pickle bed. So we're gonna plant a row of cucumbers right down the center here. We've got drip tape on that side, drip tape on that side that will keep everything watered. Yeah, the drip tape's not right on the row of cucumbers, but that'll be all right. This will put out plenty enough water to feed that row of cucumbers and will also help keep the entire bed moist and healthy. Keep it from drying out too much once it gets hot. So in the other bed, we've got pickles planted, the Excelsior variety, and today we're gonna to be planting some slicing cucumbers, a variety we grew last year called Corinto. Now, if you've been following along, you know I'm pretty bullish at the moment on these Parthenocarpic cucumber varieties that don't require any pollination and that are super, super productive. So let me tell you three reasons why, or three situations why you could benefit from growing these. So number one, which is kind of the obvious one, maybe you live in an urban area where there's not a lot of bees or not a lot of pollinators. Maybe you live out in the country and you just don't have a lot of pollinators around your garden. If that's the case, you need to be growing these Parthenocarpic varieties that don't need pollinators. Number two, maybe you're limited on garden space and you wanna grow the most cucumbers you can grow in that limited amount of space you have. If that's the case, you need to be going with some of these super productive Parthenocarpic varieties. Now, obviously we have a decent amount of room out here and I normally plant a long in-ground row of cucumbers, but this year in our raised beds, we're gonna be able to get away with just planting two raised beds of cucumbers and we're still gonna get a ton of fruit production because of the varieties we're growing. And number three, if you're a market farmer or you're growing veggies to sell, you need to be growing these Parthenocarpic varieties. Last year we planted about a 15 or 20 foot long row of these Corinto cucumbers and we were getting buckets and buckets every other day. It was just amazed at the production we were getting. So if you want to sell some cucumbers and you want a lot of them, this is the way to go. So those are three great reasons to be growing these Parthenocarpic types. Couple downsides to them, the seeds are considerably more expensive than your traditional cucumbers, but from my experiences, they are worth the extra cost. You will get a lot more production from them. 
They're also hybrids, they're not open pollinated, so you can't save the seed and replant them. You'll have to buy seed every year. So those are a few of the disadvantages, but I think all the advantages outweigh those disadvantages. So let's get our Corinto cucumbers planted here. Let's make us a little furrow down the center of our bed. And I'm not gonna overplant these. One, because the seeds are pricey. Two, because I've got 30 seeds in there. I think I can get away with 15 right here, save the other 15 maybe for a fall planting if I wanna do that. So I'm not gonna plant more seeds than I need here. These should germinate pretty well. So I'm gonna put the seeds about, I don't know, three, four inches apart here. Try to just get 15 seeds or so in this little furrow. So that should be pretty good there. Still got about a half a packet of seeds that we can save for later. Put that little one back in there and we'll just get these lightly covered up. So now that we got those slicers planted, we need to put together another one of these Ollie Garden raised bed trellises here. So I got two of them because I knew I was gonna have a bed of pickles and a bed of slicers. Now, several videos ago, I showed you us putting that netting up there, but I didn't show you putting the actual trellis together. So I'll show you how that goes. So here's the box this thing comes in and that's their website there. You can pick up this trellis or their raised beds or any of their other products. Be sure to use the code Lazy Dog Farm to get 10% off. Get our box cut open here. And this thing's pretty easy to assemble. You don't really need any tools. It just all kind of pushes together. You get a pair of gloves with every order. You even get some of these little bread ties here to tie your plants onto the trellis if you need to do that. So we got our two bottom pieces here. We just need to attach these onto the top of those. And just slides right on there. Just like that. Then we need to put the arch part on here. So those will slide on there. Just like that. We can kind of turn it around in the direction that we need it to go there. And we'll finish out the other side of the arch portion these little metal connectors here get that slid on to there and this one slid on to there now we can connect our other legs here get that piece there slid on this one down here slid on and we're almost done and then the last thing we need to do is just put these little stabilizer bars along the arch here. Now it doesn't tell you exactly where these need to go. You just want to kind of equally space them. I've been putting two of them over these connections right here. They just kind of snap on there like that. Keeps everything together. Put another one down here. And we'll put two of them along this bent part here. And that's it. So it doesn't take just a few minutes to put it together. It's metal, so it's nice and sturdy, but it's also a little bit flexible, which works well for me because I can adapt it to several different types of beds that we have out here. It's not super rigid at the bottom. We can bring in the base there a little bit if we need to, or stretch it out a little bit if we need to. Now, if you're not putting this in established garden soil, it's kind of soft. It does come with this little stake rig right here. So you could drive that into the ground, make some holes so you could push the whole trellis into the ground. You could use a piece of rebar as well, probably do the same thing. So now we just need to push it down into this bed right here and it shouldn't go anywhere considering we've got, I don't know, a foot or so of that pole down into the soil here when we push it all the way down kind of work on both sides there get it all the way down and that's pretty good and there we go now i'm not going to put the hordanova netting on this new one today because it's kind of windy out here and i don't want to fight the wind but within the next few days we'll make it look like that one right there with a little piece of that hordanova netting and once our pickles and our slicers start climbing those things, it should make for a pretty sight and also make things real easy to harvest. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Be sure to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And go in full circle there, back to the carrots. If you've struggled growing carrots in the past or maybe want to try growing carrots for the first time, be sure to check out this video right here, one we did when we planted those carrots that we harvested earlier. We've got seven easy to follow tips on that video that'll help you get a nice stand of carrots. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.